This video will show how I restore a classic Ducati headlight bucket. There's a lot of good tips and a lot of good information on this video. Now it's true, I never want to have Groundhog Days. Woke up this morning, it's pouring rain out there. Everything's soaking wet. So it's, it's going to give us an opportunity to start working on Dale's part. It's a Ducati headlight from a classic Ducati, one of the first years they made twins. When Dale was here with the, uh, to drop it off and he had the, I took some video of his 51 Ford pickup truck. Quite a cool video, you might want to check that out. But anyway, we try to keep every day different. Today we're going to go do some painting. Well, here's the thing. Uh, any job that's a painting job, there's the prep and the painting. So if it's raining, we're not going to be able to paint. Needless to say, I don't have a spray booth. But we can at least, in the worst of all worlds, get all the prep done so that as soon as either the sun comes out or we get a painting day, I can get that, in, get that done for him. And it's uh, this time of year, every day is different. There's, there's no two days that are even remotely the same. Now, it's a little more involved than what I originally thought. I thought we were not going to have a rainy day. Because what I wanted to do is make a separate video of, I have a, a brand of paint I've never used before, so obviously this is going to get put off a couple days. But none of this is rush stuff. None of this is time sensitive. So I wanted to take, as a way to check the paint that it's a perfect match, I was going to take these two little parts and show how to prep them, how to test the paint on another part, see if you're going to have alligator skins, and then go through the whole routine of setting up the paint right up to the end to where we buff it out and put it back on a motorcycle. That's probably coming in the next couple of days. But it's never, never forget my golden rule. If we get a riding day sneaking in between the raindrops here, we're going to go riding. The problem is we always run out of time. We always have 10 projects and five days to do them. So one of the projects that's been on the super back burner, I wanted to mention it right now. We, we did the repair on the tank paint. That worked out perfectly. That's on a previous video. And we replaced the, uh, we got a Yashimura muffler restored. That's on a previous video. But we haven't had a chance to go for a test ride. And to be honest, what really happens, and I know a lot of people think this is, <laughs> this really, I'm making this up, but I'm not. I come into the garage, and you know what happens? I get all the motorcycles here, and I hear a voice. Hi, Wendy, want to take a ride on the MT-09 today? If your bikes don't talk to you, maybe you need more motorcycles. So I always have a priority list, every bike here. No bike is ever finished. Every bike is always an evil twin in progress. And there's always, when I finish something on the list, I always, I add two things. Now you may think this is ridiculous, but here's the big decal we got. Let me just turn it the right side up. When I wanted to have the decal in the front of the bike, I ordered the big one. There's actually one bigger than this. Because I didn't know. And then I put them, I was doing this back and forth and I called Karen in. Karen looked at it, put the small one on. You know, and as I, after I rode the bike and took a bunch of pictures, she, she's always a little better at that than I am. So what had happened, I had done a repair on an RZ tank for Dale years ago. I don't know how many years ago, but I was wondering, and I just saw the bike recently at a Bikes and Breakfast a couple months ago, and I couldn't tell which side of the tank I repaired, so it must have been a good repair, or, <laughs> or I'm just going blind. And Dale, for sure, is an icon in the, uh, in the sport. He runs the bike and breakfast, and he's got a wonderful motorcycle collection. And he has that connection of volunteer work he does with Motorcyclepedia. Look up my name in quotation marks and Motorcyclepedia. You'll see the whole trip up there. And a thousand, I don't know how many bikes they have, hundreds. And this time of year, every morning, I do the, the normal routine I have to do every morning. Scoop the pond. Everything's soaking wet. At least it's not raining now. But the prediction is rain all day. So sometimes you just got to go with whatever the weatherman, <laughs> in this case, I can tell he's not lying. But I wouldn't want to be pro planning a cross country trip today on a motorcycle. So I need to refill on my coffee. This, you, you just got to have coffee in the morning, or I find out. You don't get anything done. So again, this is the headlight bucket. It's a classic Ducati. Again, 
These are parts that are very difficult to buy if you can find them. And if you can find them, a lot of times they're in a lot worse shape than you can imagine. Now I'm looking at the first thing on here. When you do a proper restoration, you always look around for something you can make better before we do the paint. I look down in there and I see a lot of rust. So now here's what would happen if I were to, I'm going to do the whole painting, of course, and try to do it properly. The problem is if that rust comes up through here, you wind up with a bubble in the paint. That's, why, that's how gas tanks have a bubble from time to time. So before you can do anything, I've got to get a little sandpaper in there and get that, get as much of that rust out as I can. So what I'm going to try to show on a video is how, and I'm, I always try to keep my painting tutorials very simple because painting it's hard enough. You don't have to find ways to make it harder. Now, before we even start, let me show some of the mistakes you could make. Here's a big mistake. Would be to not clean this up inside, because inside of this, there's always moisture in here. It's going to rust. These little tabs are going to rust. And it, it's just, then you're doing, you're doing a job that I wouldn't be proud of anyway. Now, if, you, if this has wax on it, I'm sure. There's little tabs and tangs and little things. So I know for sure... If this, if this is factory paint, and it probably is, that it, it's 30, at least 30 years old, maybe more. I don't know what year this bike is, but it, it wasn't made yesterday. Anyway, the first thing, before you even touch the part or touch sandpaper or any part, even those parts on the MT-09, it's so important. Step one is always. And the reason is, if there's wax or grease or dirt or grime or whatever's on here, this is simple green, by the way. What happens is, and you sand it, you grind those molecules of silicone and grease down into the paint. So you, you make the job harder and you make the, make the possibility of having a fisheye problem somewhere down the road. You just make it worse. So we don't, we're trying to make this better, not worse. So the first thing is I'll get this and then what I'll do is I'll go over to the sink and with really hot water, rinse this off so number two I don't have any soap on it you can see all the grit that comes off it even sometimes even the, the paint will start to come off old paint that's oxidized I say there's a spot here let me show this up close if I can this is a spot that's getting ready to rust. I, I don't know if I can get it it's right here a spot that's getting ready to rust and come right through so we be sure to, and it's on the bottom but I don't want to have it I'd like this to be as good as I can possibly make it. And that usually requires a couple extra hours of labor. But in the end, it's a job we could be proud of. Man, this is really hot water and all this is designed to do is get the rest of any of the soap residue off of it. And I'll go blow this out with a little compressed air. And we'll be ready to start the prep. But that rust, now that I've seen it, there's a couple of spots I wouldn't want to have that come through. Now, old bikes like this, a bike that's this old, even if it's kept indoors or in a museum or a, <laughs> moisture is in the air. The moisture is always working against you. And any good, any person that's doing a good restoration is going to look intensely for rusty spots and get rid of the rust and put some paint on it before you go any further. Now I just want to warm the part up just a little bit. The part's well, the cell at this time of year is probably 65 degrees. The reason for warming it up, if I've missed any moisture in there, I don't want to have it while I'm working on it at this point in time. Now I can see, now that the part is totally dry, I can see some areas, and let me show them, because we're going to work on these. This is where the paint is already coming up. Let me show some of this up close. Okay, you can see the little, that's a spot that's been rusted through. There's rust underneath. So that's a problem. This is another little problem. Again, what this is, and, and now I can safely say somebody's already repainted this once because they've trapped the moisture and rust in there, it looks like anyway to me. Maybe I'm wrong. There's a spot down here. So we're gonna have the, the cosmetic outer cover of this is gonna require a lot of sanding. But the first thing I wanna do, before I even do that, I've gotta address this. This is really rust that would come through and that would ruin the project a couple of years down the road now even if dale were to flip this bike i don't want to have it that oh look there's some rust down under there in fact look at that that holds the wires it's a little wire gate we're going to try to get as much of that out as we can and this i put a piece of tape on this this is a ground 
because what happens is the Ducati headlight is is grounded and I want to clean that up a little bit with sandpaper. So it's starting to look to me like this the prep on this job and you never know until you clean it and look at it up close and personal the prep on this is going to be critical but when we're all done this will be better than a new part. One of the really good investments I made and I have this on a previous video I went out to Amazon and I bought bags of these sanding drums and wire brushes and little things They'll, these are great for removing rust. These are really low quality things. They, they're not made to be like the real genuine Dremel things are like mo many times the price. But these will do the job. And it's, I'm looking for the one with the roughest. If I remember right, the red was, the, no, the black was the roughest. Let me see if I got a brand new black, the black fuzz I call it. I've used so many of them. I've used them on the RD to polish the engine. Super handy, super useful. Looks like I ran out of the black ones. Well, we'll use the red one anyway, but these are great. They don't grind in and make big scratches. They just take the material off. The downside of it is it's a good idea if it wasn't raining outside to do it outside. Just let the dust blow away. Here, I'll just put an old towel down and we'll shake it out when we're done. Well, I put this in fast forward because you get a headache listening to the Dremel tool. If you don't have any ear protection on, it really is a loud tool. So here's a way to make a very useful tool. And I found this to be very handy in the time I've been doing restorations. And the, there's always the temptation. Now, I know there's people, and even people that do very nice quality work, that always skimp on the prep. Now, I'm of the other opinion. And, I, and just imagine if you're doing construction work and you skimp on a foundation. That's about what it's like. Now this is sticky back paper, 60 grit. You just take a piece and because it's sticky back, what you can do is you just fold it over and you can fold it over twice or three times and you've got a nice little sanding tool. Now that tool is, is just perfect for doing what we're gonna do. We wanna get down in there. Let me show again, I don't know if I can show that. Again, I don't know. I thought in the beginning, I thought this part was going to be relatively, uh, you know, a couple hours and we'd have it prepped, but it looks like this part's going to need a lot more prep, but we're never going to skimp on a prep. It's like skimping on a foundation of a house. When you do that, <laughs> unless you flip the house real quick, you're in trouble. But that tool lets me get down in those little cra cracks and crevices. It takes a little time. We'll make sure we get plenty of paint down in there. Now what it is, is this piece is a laminated piece and it's got two rivets holding it on. And what happens is moisture gets down in there and when everything else is, is dried up, there's moisture in there and the moisture is rotting the, the metal away. A lot of his bikes are in the museum and Motorcyclepedia, so I don't want to have somebody walk by and say, oh, what a shame you didn't restore that headlight up to spec. Well, we want it up to spec if we can get it. We want everything. There's always a point that I always remember from even from modeling of you got to do the prep. And in this case, it's a rainy day. Who cares? We can't go riding. It really, the really, this is a part that I know Dale will treasure. Dale treasures his bikes like I do. So getting it done right will be really important. Now you can see underneath there, I was able to get a lot of the rust out, but I'm going to, that tool is really good. I want to keep grinding away until I can see that I've got all of that rust off of there. Again, the prep, a lot of people just take the thing and take a spray can of black paint. Now, if, if you're doing a restoration that, that may or may not wind up in a museum, I think it's better to do it this way. Okay, now just for reference, this is red primer. It's not rust. I've got all the rust off of there and I've got the surface roughed up. That pretty much that inside of the headlight now would be ready for a, a coat of primer. But the first thing I want to do, I want to sand this down, of course. Several ways to do this that I've done before, and I've seen other people do it successfully. You can take 400 sandpaper, roughen this up. But if it's got a lot of rust spots on, if there's any place rust is coming through, and I think that's one of them, we got to get that part of it down to bare metal. It can't be that we're painting. The one thing we can't do is paint over rust. Now, I tried to find all the spots where there was rust coming through and hit it with 60 grit paper. Here's another spot over here that just want to get 
so it has no rust. Now this has got red primer, and I don't know, maybe that's the paint they used in this era. Now a lot of times, here's what's happened, you have a compatibility issue. Some of these older bikes, even the RDs, are painted with paint that when you put modern paint on, you get alligator skinning, bubbling, and so I think it's going to be to our advantage to just get rid of all the paint on this whole, the surface that you're going to see, get rid of all the paint, start with bare metal, get a fresh coat of primer on that, and I, because the value of these parts, they're just not replaceable. You just can't call up, you know, some, some dealer and just find one for 20 bucks. It ain't happening. I put this in super fast forward. This is a stiff brass wheel and this part of the job just you get a headache listening to the grinder. If you can it's a good idea to wear earphones and uh, eye protection of course. But this is just labor intensive and it seems like this takes longer than it does but when it's done the paint is off. So a lot of good ways to get off the paint. Could have used paint remover. Could have sanded it by hand. The wire wheel really burns it off. It doesn't grind it off, but because it burns it off, it doesn't leave enough of an etch. So we're going to get out the, the hand sander and the little palm sander that we have and get an etch on this. Now, if you don't get an etch on this, and I'm sure my good friend Scott would not mind me sharing a story. He just finished restoring a, a classic Suzuki, and when he pulled the tape up, the paint came up because somewhere in there, somewhere in the, the sandwich of paint, there wasn't a good enough tooth, and we're going to make sure we get a good tooth on this so that the primer gets a good tooth, make like a washboard out of it. As our little palm sander, and you could do this by hand, of course, but and some rough sandpaper, but the whole idea, if you get nothing else from this video, I would assume people that this is the kind of thing you learn the hard way and Scott learned the hard way I've learned the hard way and Luciano's learned the hard way it, there's rules to painting that when you violate them it's a real problem it, it, and the worst the single biggest rule is not to clean the part before you sand it and not to get a good etch to the primer so because the primer is going to hold the paint on and if I were to just paint this without primer mm, yeah you could get away with it but, and it's a different thing when you're going to flip a bike, you just buy a bike and you hope the guy, eh, and you never see him again. Well, the bikes I have, and I think some of the bikes Dale has, this might be one of them, they're keepers. They're keepers. These, these are my children. These are the things that I, I want to have these forever. These are forever bikes. And this is such a critical part of it. Again, I'm putting it in fast forward. You get, I get a headache listening to all these tools. It, to get that etch, to get a scratch on it, the rougher the better. Whether you use 80 grit, 60 grit, doesn't really matter. The primer will fill it in, and by having all those etchings and scratchings, the primer gets a good tooth, and usually any paint you have will stick to a good quality primer. Now, this part now has the proper etch with the machine sanding. I'm just going over this. Any little spot I see, again, I, I treat the work that I do as uh, these are all keepers. When I did Joe Padula's Ducati fairing repair last year, it was a lot of labor, but, but it was done right. And to me, there's no such thing as you, there's a shortcut, and yeah, you sleep good at night. I only sleep good at night when I know this is done as best I can. And I, it's a lot of labor. It takes a lot of time. It's not like you grab a thing of Rust-Oleum off the shelf and just go paint it without even wiping it off. Like the other day when I was riding through Jersey City and I saw Rendy's auto body, they painted a car for me. This is a true story. When I was much, much younger and lived on Broom Street in Jersey City, I brought them the car. I don't even think they wiped it off. An hour later, it was painted. They oven dry it, however they do that. At the time, I don't know even what kind of paint they used, but it was as shiny as could be for about a month. And then little by little, chunks came off and <laughs> now just sharing good information which is what this channel is about this is the most critical part to get that i want to show this is sticky back sandpaper even though you don't need it stuck together i did this with the machine but i want to do it by hand too is to get down in there because when dale or whoever's going to assemble a bike there's going to be paint build up here and when they snap that chrome ring on if it chips the paint we got a big repair so to get the paint to stick, 
And I know I've had it, Scott's had it, Luciano's had it. I know that way the paint just doesn't stick. And paint compatibility, which I'm going to address in a very, a very, uh, a video very soon. When it, when it bites you, it hurts. And I know it hurts Scott when he pulled the tape up and he, and I've done it with model airplanes and motorcycles. That's why I'm so fanatical about getting, I want the prep and I don't care how long this takes today. But I don't want to have it that we're up at the village, at the market, and <laughs> you hit a bump and a chunk of paint comes off. Anyway, we're pretty much ready. Let's put a coat of primer on that. And since we're trying to share useful information on this video, and things that may not be obvious to people that don't paint every day, that there's more, way more different kinds of primer than you think. There's, there, made specifically for certain purposes. But this primer, when you see prime, and it doesn't matter if it's Rust-Oleum or Duplicolor, primer sealer, those two words on a can means it's a good idea to put a coat of that in between anything plastic and your paint. Because the thinner in some paint will go down and melt the plastic and you'll have an alligator. So that's number one, is to seal a part if it's plastic. Filler primer, when you have a a job where you have a lot of bondo and a lot of big dents and you're really restoring something that's really in rough shape, fill a primer is going to be the equivalent of adding three coats of primer for every coat. But for our purposes, we want to use self-etching primer. And I, only, I want to put the thinnest coat possible because the only purpose of this primer is to seal and attach the paint to the metal. So we don't, we're not going to have any tape on this. And actually, there's not many reverse curves, like what I call ditches or valleys, so the paint will not tend to pull up on its own. But this is going to give the paint itself, this is really glue. It's going to glue the paint to the metal. And that is, that is super, super useful information. But keep in mind, there are a lot more primers even than this. But, but these are the three I, I keep in inventory. So it's still drizzling out there, but we're going to try to wait for a little time. We can get in between the raindrops and get one coat of self-etching primer on that. And because we already have a really good tooth, this should really bond the paint to the metal. So another little detail. There's threads in here and threads in here. I don't want to get paint on it. So out in the garage, I want to go through my bolts, get an old bolt, to seal up the side we're not going to do, and then leave the other one sticking out so I can grab it with a pair of vice grips and make kind of a handle while I'm painting it. So this is perfect. Now I can grab this with a pair of vice grips, hold it while I'm painting it, and then I can hang it up by the vice grips themselves, actually. And because the heat is on in the house and it's about 38 degrees, the heat will be kicking on that should dry up very quickly. Now I waited half an hour or so, had a cup of coffee, had some business to do with Karen, but it still didn't stop raining. So I'm going to do this in the back foyer, just, just hit it with the primer. I don't like to paint inside the house, but I can wall off that area there and just get the, I can get the primer on this and have it drying. And I don't know when it's going to stop raining. But we have no idea. So this is pretty funny. Underneath the paint, as I ground it out, this is an Aprilla. <laughs> and I, obviously Ducati and Aprilla shared parts suppliers. But that's, that's pretty cool. That didn't show in the, open, in the paint until I ground it down. So of course, goes without saying, number one thing, shake, shake, shake the primer. Make sure you're not, you're not just spraying it out. And a lot of times, if you're using up the bottom of the can, it doesn't spray as good as the top of the can. I don't know why. I don't need to know. If I'm doing a part that really matters, I want to make sure I'm not using up the last ounce unless that last little bit, if I'm going to sand it anyway. This I shouldn't have to sand. I should be able to put this on, let it dry, and then spray the black. Now, it looks like the drizzling has stopped, but I'm still skeptical about going outside. But I'm going to wait this out. Because I would like to get the black painted today, so I did this right in the foyer with all the doors to the house shut. Now, while that's up by the heating vent, that'll dry up just beautifully. And give that at least 45 minutes an hour to dry. We certainly have other work to do on a farm. Believe it or not, we got a break in the weather. 
and we should be able to get some black paint on that and it'll be ready to dry overnight. So by waiting out the day here, uh, it played to our favor and we did get the black painted today. I'm always happy to have that. That'll be sitting up now overnight, drying up by the heating vent. So Dale, if you're watching, the black is on your part. And even though these, these videos go out about a week after I shoot them, the part will be drying up overnight. Now, a lot of people have told me, and, and my career in painting goes back a long time. Over 60 years I've been painting things. Ever since that day at Rendy's, when Rendy's, I went through this story already on one of the rides last week. They painted my car and did such a crappy job, I decided at that point in time I was going to be a professional painter. And... Well, it worked out pretty good for me. I've been able to paint a lot of things. Every one of the bikes in the garage has been painted, evil twinned. I've painted guitars and outboard engines and God knows what else. But anyway, it's not beside, it's all beside the point. What I want to do now, I made a master plan. I'm going to be testing a brand new type of paint in the next couple days. And then when I do that and put the clear on, I'll put the clear on this. You really could put the clear on now if you were in a rush and... Dale's not in a rush, and I'm certainly not in a rush. I would rather have the quality part of the job. So, uh, and, and uh, as I said in the beginning of the video, the thing to remember about painting, it's, it's a, a whole lot of it is the prep and getting that old crap off. And people that paint on top of it, yeah, it's like th skating on thin ice. And, but when you have a keeper motorcycle like this is, or a rare bike or one that's valuable to you, this is the way I would do it. And if you flip bikes, get out the Rust-Oleum. But if you're not flipping bikes, if this is your this is your uh, pride and joy, this is a better way to do it. So I hope that was useful information. I, I try to put useful information on a video that we could share. And there's more coming. For I try to post the video almost every day. But some days family stuff gets in the way. But this worked out great. Dale, this is going to be a nice little addition to your classic Ducati. So once again, I'm at that point of the year. The riding is very sporadic now. We, uh, we are losing the weather day by day as it drops into the really uh, cold temperatures. And on days when it's not so cold, a lot of times it rains or the roads are slippery. But we are starting our restoration projects. And there are so many that I've tried to do that uh, for the MT-09, I've got a list, including the wheels, including some carbon fiber parts I want to make, including adding a clock to the dashboard. It, it's just endless. The, the restorations and the evil twinning of the bikes is always a work in progress. And I, I'm not deluding myself thinking there'll be a day when I get done and all the projects will be done and I can just uh, sit and drink coffee all day. And even if I could, I wouldn't want to do that. I want to stay busy. One of, the, one of the objectives of me being involved in motorcycling is I do enjoy and I really need the exercise to stay healthy and stay fit. And I do enjoy shooting the videos and I do enjoy the editing, of course. It's a, been a great hobby of mine for, since 1987. Now, a lot of people don't notice. I shot my first official video in 1987 in Lincoln, Nebraska at the National Model Plane Championships. And since then... It, it's been a long road. It's hard to believe all these years, all that time has gone under the, uh, all the water has gone under the bridge, I guess. But I've enjoyed having this little workshop that I have. I've enjoyed my little humble bike collection. And I try to constantly do upgrades, constantly do evil twinning. And I do enjoy sharing it with my friends on YouTube. And I do enjoy watching the, the other things that people put out there. And there's, there's a bottomless pit of good entertainment and basically good information too. But the thing I add to it, and because I've been painting for so long and I've painted so many things, I really, I don't want to just not share that. I really think one of my contributions to the world of motorcycling is I can share that information with everybody. And I hope you enjoy the video as much as I enjoy making them. So if you enjoyed the video, 
I hope you share it with your friends. And of course, I hope, most of all, that we'll see you tomorrow. And thanks again for watching.